So you all know this guy. Many know him as the famous Meta World Peace. You know what? I'm talking about how good this guy was while he was Ron Artest. So I think I'm just gonna call him that in this video. And within that time frame, while he was Ron Artest, lies the great player whose talent has been somewhat lost in NBA history. So let's start by taking it back to the beginning of his career. Ron Artest was drafted with the 16th overall pick in the 1999 NBA draft by the Chicago Bulls. He was entering a Bulls franchise that was still struggling to rebuild after their dynasty of the 90s had disassembled. As the 16th overall pick, there was optimism that he would be a quality rotation player, but he certainly didn't have star expectations surrounding him. As a 20-year-old rookie, the 6'6 small forward had a quality debut season, as he averaged 12 points, 4.3 rebounds, 2.8 assists, and 1.7 steals on 40.7% shooting. He also revealed himself to be a solid on-ball defender, who brought energy and intensity in all of his minutes. The combination of his offensive production and of his defensive presence was enough for him to make the NBA's all-rookie team. Regardless, the Bulls franchise was still nowhere close to competing as they finished the regular season with a terrible 17-65 record. His second season in the league was more of the same as he put up similar numbers, but the Bulls were still among the worst teams in the league. As he was just into his third year, Chicago was desperate to shake up their roster to become competitive once again, so they traded our test in a six-player deal to the Indiana Pacers. This is where he would begin to break out as a star, as his minutes would increase and as his skills would improve on the court. We had already seen him display his strength and tenacity, but with the Pacers, he would begin to display his ability to handle the ball and to be a leading scorer, and even close out games with this clutch play. In the 2003-2004 season, he experienced his first year as an NBA All-Star behind averages of 18.3 points, 5.3 rebounds, 3.7 assists, and 2.1 steals on 42% shooting. What he's most famous for, though, was his all-time great defense, and in that area, 2004 may have been his greatest season, as he was named the league's Defensive Player of the Year. He was a major cog in that very elite system, with teammates like Jermaine O'Neal, Al Harrington, and Reggie Miller. With our test solid production leading the way, this Pacers unit won 61 games, which was the best record in the entire NBA. They comfortably won the first two rounds of the playoffs, but ultimately lost in the Eastern Conference Finals in six games to the perennial contender, the Detroit Pistons. Although this wasn't their year, the Pistons were getting better, and so was Ron Artest. With key additions like Steven Jackson in the offseason, it appeared as if the 61-win Indiana Pacers were prepared to be even better, and possibly win their first ever NBA championship. Seven games into the 2004-2005 season, and a 25-year-old Ron Artest is playing not just like the best defender in the league, but as an elite scorer as well, as he averaged 24.6 points, 6.4 rebounds, 3.1 assists, and 1.7 steals on 49.6% shooting, and an extremely lethal 41.2% from three-point range. Again, this was only the first seven games of the year, so were these numbers sustainable for an entire season for Artest? Probably not to that extent, but it was clear that his confidence was building on both sides of the court as he was playing his best basketball, but that's when the infamous Malice at the Palace happened. Our test had several incidents up to that moment that brought his character into question, but when the drink was thrown and he ran into the stands and started punching people, his career and legacy would change forever. Because of the incident, Ron was suspended for the remaining 73 games of the season, and Steven Jackson was suspended for 55 games. And just like that, the 2005 Pacers' championship hopes went up in flames. Despite the absence of our test, the Pacers still made it to the second round before being eliminated once again by Detroit. In total, our test missed 86 games, which is the longest suspension for an on-court incident in NBA history. By January of 2006, Artest was traded to the Sacramento Kings for Pesha Stojakovic. Despite concerns about Artest's explosive personality, he actually fit very well with that Sacramento group and pushed them back into the playoff picture, as they went 14-5 immediately after acquiring the small forward. He also made first-team all-defense once again that season. Ron spent three seasons with the Kings, averaging as high as 20 points per game, while continuing to be arguably the best wing defender the game had to offer. But at the end of that third season, Sacramento committed to the rebuilding process and traded Artest to the Houston Rockets, where he would be joining Tracy McGrady and Yao Ming in what appeared to be the formation of a new super team in the Western Conference. Unfortunately, injuries were a consistent issue for this Rockets team, as McGrady's season was done due to an injury after only 35 games played. 
Our test adequately filled the scoring void left by McGrady, and he led the Rockets to a 53-win season and a fifth seed in the playoffs. After defeating the Blazers in six games, the Rockets were matched up against Kobe and the 65-win Los Angeles Lakers. With the absence of McGrady, this was a series that the Lakers were expected to handle easily, but even without T-Mac, and even after losing Yao Ming for the series in Game 3, Ron Artest still led Houston to push the Lakers to a hard-fought 7-game series, which was the closest anyone came to beating the Lakers in that championship run. Along with the Pacers in 2005, this was the second major what-if scenario in Ron's career that potentially ruined a chance at a championship ring. But his fortunes would soon change as he was signed by the defending champion Lakers the following season. It's easy to remember the 2010 champion Lakers for the impacts of Kobe Bryant and Pau Gasol, but the player who had a star-level impact who often goes underappreciated is none other than Ron Artest. One of the biggest weaknesses of the 2008 Lakers who failed to beat the big three Celtics in the finals was their lack of intensity and physicality in comparison to the Celtics. Kobe had essentially said this as well, but our test was the Lakers' answer to this weakness, as he made them stronger on the boards, he made them tougher physically, and even tougher mentally. Not only was he one of the major factors in defeating the Celtics in the 2010 Finals, but Artest also had numerous moments where he came up clutch leading up to the Finals, like in Game 5 of the Western Conference Finals, when his rebound and putback off of Kobe Bryant's miss won the game at the buzzer. He followed up that performance with a 25-point game to help the Lakers win the clincher in Game 6. From this point on in his career, he was known as an NBA champion and would soon change his name to the famous Meta World Peace. But it was also around that time where he became just a small contributing role player who had lost much of his speed and a bit of his defensive edge. Looking back at the totality of his career, Meta made four All-Defense teams, one All-Star team, won the Defensive Player of the Year award, is an NBA champion, and is still waiting for his Hall of Fame selection. Now I've got two questions for you guys. Where do you rank Meta slash Ron Artest among the greatest wing defenders in NBA history? And second, do you think he deserves to be in the Basketball Hall of Fame? I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.